Introduce yourself to this class. This is a Fiat Lux class. Okay. So they don't have to take this class and I don't have to teach it. <laughs> we do this because we want to. Okay. And, and we're basically asking scientists why it's important for them to work with artists or with art topics or doing art themselves. And we now have had the nanoscientists and the evolutionary biologist talk to us. So you're the first artist. <gasps> oh gosh. Um, and in addition to many questions we have, uh, maybe you can start by just telling the class a little bit about your background. Okay. I kind of, do I get to ask questions? Of course. But okay. First we ask. Okay. First you, oh, okay. You can I'll ask me ask this you, one. The class will ask you and then you can go back. Okay. okay, so my background is that I did my undergrad at DMA. I took Victoria's class when it was Desma 9. Do you still teach yes. that? Yes, I do. It's an introduction to art, science, and technology, except now it's an online class. Okay. It's completely online. Yeah, so when I was there, it was still physical in the flesh. Um, and I, I've just been interested in science forever and I always kind of explore it in more of a conceptual way or a philosophical way. I guess I'm more of like a philosopher of science than anything else, but I really don't consider myself a very academic person, so a lot of what I do is sort of just like intuitive, like I'm attracted to, to this place or these people or these ideas and I want to explore, you know, this future really deeply. Um, and so, yeah, I've done like very, I work in different mediums. I've done video stuff, like more performative stuff, and um, some like f electronics installation stuff. And uh, what are these flags behind those? So, I mean, I guess it's, well see, this is the reason why I was, I wanted to ask the question. Okay, go ahead. Because I just kind of want to know what you guys think this is about. I mean, that's sort of like the traditional cop-out, but I have plenty of things to say. I'm, I'm just personally more interested in how you respond to... Without knowing anything. Right, right. Just, you know, not... Does anything here make sense or resonate or, like, did anything stand out to you without my telling you anything? how individuals were choosing like which sperms to choose from to have a child with to like choose what characteristics and traits like a kid should have and I thought that kind of resonated with it because it's like if you could choose your kid like what qualities you would give it and then I think a lot of people would choose like very generic traits I mean there's traits people all like there's like um, certain traits perhaps that for like more intelligent kid for a more athletic kid for a more healthier kid and then there's traits of beauty that almost everyone can agree with like like today is perhaps like bigger eyes smaller faces and so forth and I feel like if we could do that in the future I don't think it's a good idea personally mm -hmm. I feel like people are unique for a reason and that if everyone becomes like good at everything it wouldn't be so special anymore so. on an aesthetic level I really liked the juxtaposition of the more academic geared conversation with this guy with this crazy white beard just spouting off these um, these comments and I thought it was really interesting how both sides are kind of like sharing these profound thoughts but in such a different environment from one another. Um, yeah as far as the subject matter like what she was touching on it, it seems like you're getting at um, you know the ethics of eugenics or de uh, messing with genetics and that's kind of what I'm getting from these two flags but then also to just like what she was talking about where you're comparing and comp uh, contrasting these two views I'm seeing like another comparing and contrasting with the white and the black um, flags so as far yeah as far as um, aesthetics and subject matter like they touched on those really well and your exhibit touches on that really well So, I mean, like, so I kind of want to respond to this, 
Well, wait, what was the question before? <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead and respond. Yeah, I just, I mean, I like this conversational vibes. I know it's not really optimal for the fine. documentation. Mm -hmm. I, I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> um, I, I am actually personally, like, so I don't know, it's probably not that clear, but part of what motivated me to go down this whole path may seem kind of obtuse, but I started, I mean, I've, I'm just interested in the problem of climate change and how we will deal with that problem. And, um, and, I, and I kind of got a little bit disturbed at the idea that we would have to go backwards or the idea that, you know, we, we have to just eat only organic food. Like, we can't fly in planes. And that one pisses me off the most, actually. Like, not being able to travel seems like the worst idea ever. Um, <laughs> and, and so, you know, there's this kind of, there is a, th a thread of like primitivist, regressive um, way of, of dealing, yeah, reactionary way of dealing with, with the situation that we're in currently. Um, and then I read this essay that was about, um, it was moral bioenhancement was the idea. And it's by this like really, do you, have you, I don't, I never remember his name, but he's at Oxford. He's like this really crazy bioethicist guy who is just like really extremely pro-technology. And he says that, um, that like human beings are actually not morally capable of dealing with a problem like climate change because it requires that you really like care about the collective, essentially, essentially. And the idea is the ways that he proposed that like, oxytocin is this big you know, trendy thing to just be like, oh, oxytocin will fix everything. Um, which is really an attractive idea, but also seems totally unrealistic, especially because there are downsides to oxytocin that you may or may not be aware of. But anyway, um, we can talk about those if you're interested. So, so I kind of, but I kind of became really interested in this idea of sort of like a rev reverse Gattaca situation where the person who's genetically modified is actually the outcast. They're the freak, they're the thing that nobody wants to touch. Um, and like, what is the story? How does that person live in this world? And that, so this is sort of like a prologue to what will be a larger like narrative, essentially. Um, so it's kind of an experiment to do an exhibition with like a story that's still in development. Um, but. Yeah, that's the basic background. How did you discover this man? <laughs> that's a good question. Well, this is one of those things where when you just go towards the things that you're attracted to and you aren't that, you know, you're like open to whatever comes your way, you find people like that. Um, <laughs> because I, I kind of, I was just, there's this place called Slab City, which does, do you guys know where the Salton Sea is? Or Salvation Mountain is like the trendy place to go. Maybe tell. Okay, tree? sort of. It's actually like two hours away from Joshua Tree, but yeah, it's like in the desert in that direction. Um, and Slab City is like it was a, a military base that was decommissioned, and there's still a military base adjacent to it. But this land just became kind of like ownerless. It was just this random piece of land, and so people started using it as a trash dump because it was cheaper to just throw their trash on it than to pay to uh, have it actually properly disposed of. Um, and then, at some point, people started living there in trailers. So kind of like on top of this trash dump, it's really surreal. I mean, they must have done some cleanup, but there's still like quite a lot of trash that people just live next to. Some of them build things out of the trash. Some of them just like literally live in trash. Um, but the point is that it's like a free land. And a lot of um, people, like the more the richer people, basically, who have RVs and are sort of migratory, just come there in the winter. They're winter birds, and then they leave in the summer when it gets really hot. And then people who really don't have any money just live there all the time. Mm -hmm. And there are outlaws, and there are like, you know, there's a lot of people who are like trying to get away from prison, a prison sentence, and <laughs> there, there are like definitely some shady things, but there's also some really wonderful things, and it's I don't know if you guys have been to Burning Man, but it doesn't really compare to Burning Man. It's just like, it's like year round, we actually suffer through this and love it, Burning Man. <laughs> but they would hate me for saying that. Anyway, this guy 
it's kind of a funny story and kind of arbitrary, but I just, he had a dog outside. I was there to film because I decided that this was a good location for the future of Los Angeles, maybe. Because there's also a sea there, the Salton Sea, which yeah. is really creepy and weird, and you should go there. Definitely go there. That's mm -hmm. weird. Um, is, is the Salton Sea where the fishes live for thousands of years? Where the fishes, yeah, and died. They, Never mind, I think it's a different place. Well, it's kind of funny that you mention the fishes, because the Salton Sea is where like the beach is covered with fish bones. There's like, something strange about like, the fish there. They're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Like, some of them still live there, but... Why did you choose to omit creating this context that you're telling us about? Because by focusing just on him, I had no sense that this was happening in yeah. that area, which I right. heard about, I've never been. Yeah. Well, I think that was more for the simplicity. Like, that's not really a huge conceptual decision. It was just that, like, I like the idea of having a conversation between two people. And I could have shown more of the surroundings, but I also don't really, like I have a lot of footage of that, but there's also a person in the footage that I would have to explain. Well, it's like totally, it's a logistical thing. Got it. But the idea is that that environment will be heavily yeah. featured, actually. So is it a movie you're planning, or yeah. more elaborate installation? I mean, my ideal is, it, I, it's a movie, like I wanna, it's gonna be a narrative, but I really like the idea of incorporating some performative elements and um, like intervening in reality a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, these flags could, who knows, maybe they'll appear on a flagpole, you know, like these yeah. kinds of things. Like, yeah. I don't think I could ever settle with just making a, a movie. Like on the, op who was here for the opening? Was anyone? Yeah, it was a few people. So it was not, it was like pretty spontaneous, but me and, did you see the shady guy in the hat? <laughs> <laughs> he Yellow hat? We just thought he was part of the audience and then I realized, oh, he must be. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I didn't see that. You probably he saw him, but just thought he was, uh, Cool guy in dark glasses. <laughs> he was wearing glasses. Acting weird, but yeah. then with a trench coat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you changed your outfit three times. Yeah, I did some costume changes because he was f he was following me. Oh, so you I So I was trying to like Oh with the yellow shoes. With the yellow hat. I have yellow She's shoes. She's got the yellow shoes. <laughs> Whatever, it's not, a, I mean, the point is that there was sort of like an undercover performance happening, and I, and I like that, like, I like it when these things come from reality and spill over into reality also, and that there's just these, like, dynamic influences. Then it would have been interesting to have him just come and disappear out, out of the frame, or maybe be in... To be, yeah. In the mirror, like, you suddenly see the guy. Yeah. Because he wasn't in the film. He wasn't. He was only here. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't make that even, even Yeah. Make that no, no, no. I think you should yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. make it kind of, what? I thought I just saw this. And then when you do the documentary, you have people in the crowd that you hire. Yes. Like, make it even more elaborate. Exactly. I'll have, like, audience, oh, yes. This is, you guys want to be in it? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah. <laughs>